Let's jump into problem 95A, a comprehensive variance analysis problem that has us doing material labor variable overhead, fixed overhead variances. So it's the kitchen sink problem. It's got a bit of everything. Chemco produces chemicals for cleaning pools. It sells the chemicals, a liquid, in four liter buckets. The company's standards costs follow, and these are our standards. Whoops, <laughs> I misspelled standards. Uh, these are our standards. And of course, we're going to compare them to actual information. It says during the month, the company produced a thousand buckets of chemicals. The following information is known. And here is a bunch of actuals. And we're going to be comparing our standards to our actuals in computing materials variances, labor rate and efficiency variances, variable overhead variances, and fixed overhead variances. But we'll start rather than like, reading the whole thing at once, we'll just take it a piece at a time. So let's think of our materials variances. And this is the table I've provided. Again, I've mentioned this a few times. When I test my students, I don't give them this table. They'll have to remember it and produce it on the on the test. But uh, here it is for us to fill out. So we're looking for the actual quantity of material used in liters and times the actual price per liter, actual quantity times standard price, and so on. So let's, let's see if we can find that information so we said here's the actuals the company purchased 5,500 liters of direct material at a cost of 21,450. That certainly sounds like an actual quantity to me, 5,500 liters. Uh, the quantity is, or not the quantity, the, the total here is 21,450. Uh, so we can figure out our price that we paid per liter just by dividing the two. 21,450 divided by 5,500, $3.90 a liter is what we paid for this uh, material, right? We paid 21,450 to buy 5,500 liters. Okay, AQ remains the same. And again, this is for purchased, 5,500 liters. Our standard price per liter comes from the standard cost card, and you can see it's $4 a liter. Just a quick aside, sometimes I do this question in class, students go, well, wait, it's a four liter bucket, and we use five liters of material? And yeah, absolutely, right? You might boil it down, you might sift some of that material out or find it down. So it's very possible to put in five liters, and only get four liters of good product out. So sometimes people get hung up on that. But uh, uh, the cost is $4 per liter. That's our standard price. So 5,500 times four is 22,000. Okay, so comparing the two, we're 550 apart, right? That's the difference, that is the variance. Is it a good variance or a bad variance? Is it a favorable variance or an unfavorable variance? And the answer is, again, compare what's different, the four and the 3.9. I'm expecting to pay $4 a liter. I only paid 390 per liter. I saved some money, this is favorable. Let's move over to the other side of the equation. Now this is on to our material used, not the same AQ as material purchased. Well, not necessarily. Uh, okay, the company purchased 5,500 liters at a cost of 21,450. The company had no beginning inventory and had 700 liters of material on hand at the end of the year. So of this 5,500, I didn't use 700. I must use the rest, which would be 4,800. 5,500 minus 700 means the actual quantity used was 4,800 liters. Standard price remains 4. 4,800 times 4 is 19,200. Working over to SQSP. Well, SP is still four. What we have to do for SQ, and you've seen this, this phrase before, given the actual output given the number of good units i made how much well in this case it's going to be material but in part two labor in part three overhead <laughs> uh, given the actual output how much how many liters of material should it have taken to make this well let's figure it out we made a thousand buckets of chemicals and it's supposed to take five liters per bucket so it should have taken five thousand liters uh, so that's my SQ, right? 5,000 liters, 5,000 times four is $20,000 worth of chemicals. The difference here is 800. Now is this favorable or unfavorable? 
again, compare what's different between the two. The four is the same, so it's 5,000 versus 4,800. I was supposed to use or expect to use 5,000 liters of chemicals to yield the, the units I, I got. I only used 4,800. This is good. This is a savings. This is favorable. So overall, I am $1,350 uh, $1, favorable for my overall materials variances. And you can see how that breaks down. So into the problem, it says the company uh, recently entered into a contract with a new supplier is eager for their business. Should the company continue to work with the supplier or should they look for a new one? I mean, first month in, this is pretty good. We would be very happy for this, right? We beat our standards. We they give us a better price and seemingly possibly a better quality material because we use less of it. This is great news on the material front. Okay, let's continue uh, on to B. B asks us to compute the labor rate and efficiency variances. So again, AQAP, AQSP, and so on. SQSP, I guess I don't need to say and so on <laughs> for that. Um, so let's look at our labor actuals here. It says direct labor workforce worked 220 hours, total of 5280. So aq of course for labor is actual hours which is 220 direct labor hours ap is the actual rate per hour which i don't know but i do know the total amount i paid them which was 5280 and we can work backwards to a, a wage rate here 5280 dollars divided by 220 hours i paid my workers 24 dollars per hour that was the wage rate aq remains 220 Standard price, well, that's going to come from the standards. I'm supposed to be paying 20 bucks an hour, according to the, the labor in my standards there. So 220 times 20 is, what is that, 4,400, I think? Yeah, 4,400. And uh, you can see there's a difference there of, what is that, 880. Now, is this a good difference or a bad? Is this favorable or unfavorable? The answer is, well, I'm supposed to pay 20 bucks an hour. I paid 24. I overpaid. This is unfavorable. I overpaid compared to my standards. Good for the employees. They got more money, but bad for me. Now, maybe it's just an outdated standard. There could be lots of reasons for this, but we did overpay. Uh, the wage rate was higher than what we anticipated. SP remains 20 in the last part of this. And once again, we're answering that question at the actual level of output. So I think we made a thousand buckets of chemicals here. How much labor should it have taken? How many hours of labor should it have taken? A thousand buckets of chemicals. It's supposed to take, according to the standard, 0 0.25 hours. So 250 hours is what it's supposed to take. So SQ, it's a thousand, again, a thousand times 0 0.25 equals, sorry, it's a little messy, 250 direct labor hours. 250 times 20 is 5,000. And we'll compare the two, 5,000 to 4,400, it's 600 different. So let's, let's remember what we do. We compare what's different. The 20 and the 20 are the same. 250 labor hours, that's my quantity, is what it should have taken. It only took 220, this is favorable. It took me less time than what I would have guessed. So it's a favorable efficiency variance overall it's a mixed bag cost us more we paid higher wages but we did save money by being more efficient uh 880 unfavorable 600 favorable just combine them and we end up 280 unfavorable so uh uh the the second part of the question it says the company experimented using more senior staff and fewer junior employees this month was it successful you know it's a mixed bag we'd say it's more efficient but the efficiency gains were were uh more than made up for by the wage rate costs so uh i would say it was an experiment that that didn't work it wasn't like a home run here it cost us more we didn't save it in efficiency so this was a, this was a costly decision and i would go back to the other way generally speaking when something's favorable you're you're 
in these types of questions, you're going to argue for it. When something's unfavorable, you're going to argue against it because all we have is the numbers. So classic situation where accountants always get accused of like being myopic and only seeing the numbers. And that's why in these questions, we can't see the bigger picture. Maybe there's big picture reasons for doing it. The numbers say don't. Okay, let's continue. Uh, compute variable overhead spending and efficiency variances. So again, this will be very similar to our labor variance, uh, AQAP, AQSP, SQSP, and the Qs, because it told us our overhead was driven by labor hours. So the quantities are all labor hours. So they're all the same as they were up here. Uh, so it says variable overhead was 1050. That's the actual variable overhead cost. 1050. And the actual quantity for variable over it is the actual direct labor hours of 220. So just working backwards, our our variable overhead rate per hour 1050 divided by 220, 4.77. 4.772. So again, it's 220 direct labor hours. The rate that we ended up paying was uh, 4.772 per hour, so our labor cost was uh, 10.50. Okay, AQ remains 220 direct labor hours. SP for variable overhead. Well, our SP for overhead is eight dollars an hour, but wait, uh, we got to break it down into variable overhead per hour and fixed overhead per hour. And it's got to give us some information. It says the manufacturing overhead rate, I got to read this whole paragraph. The manufacturing overhead rate of $8 per direct labor hour can be further broken down. The company estimates variable overhead is five. Okay, well that's easy. And then fixed therefore is three. Um, the company expected to produce 1,100 buckets using 275 labor hours during the month. And based on those estimates, uh, variable overhead was budgeted 1375, fixed overhead 825. Okay, I think I've got enough information just with this five. So let's use the five. Uh, where are we? Uh, our standard price for uh, variable overhead is $5 per hour. Now you might be saying, well, what about all that budget and actual stuff? That's for fixed, right? We compare budgets and actuals for fixed. Uh, 220 times five is $1,100. So comparing the two, we're $50 apart. Now, is this favorable or unfavorable? Well, I compare the standard uh, 220 and 220, that matches. So don't worry about that. It's the difference. Standard price, $5 an hour and actual price, $4.70 an hour. It's less. I paid less for overhead. That's good. That's a savings. This is favorable. SQSP, our SP remains $5 per hour. RSQ, we say, <laughs> back to this thing, at the actual output, how much, in this case, overhead driver, which is direct labor hours, should it take? How many direct labor hours should it take? Well, we just did the math. We said, oh, okay, it's 0.25 hours. It's a thousand buckets. It should take 250 hours. Same as, uh, same as with our labor variant. So it is the same, 250 hours times five bucks an hour, 250 times five, $1,250. So the difference here is $150. And if it's favorable up here, it's gonna be favorable down here. It is favorable and we can just compare, right? Our actual quantity, it took us 220 hours. It should have taken us 250 hours. Uh, we saved time. And so we were efficient with labor and therefore with overhead. Okay, last one, fixed overhead, the quirky one. We compare actual and budget, and these are generally gonna be given amounts. What did I actually spend on fixed overhead? And it's down here, bullet point four, these are all our actuals. It says variable overhead is 1050, fixed 800. Okay, so fixed overhead is 800, that's the actual 800. Budgeted fixed overhead, they give it in this paragraph. Uh, manufacturing overhead rate of $8 an hour can be further broken down. The company estimates $5 per labor hour for variable, and therefore we said three for fix, which is going to come into play in a minute. Um, the company expected to produce 1,100 buckets during 275 labor hours. Uh, variable overhead was budgeted at 1375. Fixed overhead was budgeted at 825. Okay, so. 
we expected to spend $825 on fixed overhead. We actually spend $800. This is $25 to the good. This is $25 favorable. Now applied is like SQSP and it's also a volume variant. So we can tell if it's going to be favorable or not just by looking at one thing. We plan to produce 1,100 buckets. We actually produced 1,000 buckets. We underproduced. If we underproduced the plan, that means the volume was worse than we expected. We have less surface area to spread out our fixed costs onto, and therefore this is gonna be an unfavorable variant. So whatever happens here, I know this will be a big U. But let's figure out the numbers here. SQ times SP, the SQ is the same as, you know, it's based on labor hours. So it's 250 labor hours. So 0.25 hours times a thousand buckets, our SQ is 250. SP we said is $3 an hour. And just to kind of go over that, there's a few ways you could calculate it here. I think the simplest way is they say the manufacturing overhead rate of $8 an hour can be further broken down. Variable is five, therefore fixed has got to be three, as we said. Another way to look at it, though, is they said, okay, fixed overhead, we budget to be $825. And that's uh, if we use 275 hours. So 825 divided by 275 means $3 an hour, right? So I, I've calculated a couple different ways. We come to three. So 250 times three, 750 compared to 825, we're off by $75. And indeed it is unfavorable. Whew. That was a lot of variances and not a lot of time. I hope this video helped. I know it's a big one. And if it helped you, I hope you'll help me. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.